How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over reaction rate mechanism graphs. I think this is kind of an important topic because graphical questions are becoming more prominent in a lot of types of standardized tests and also it's I think it's just a good idea to be able to graph uh, information that you gather or be able to interpret a graph you know from you know whatever the case will be. Maybe it's a multiple choice or open response question. So here's kind of a, the standard way that these are usually shown. Time is going to be on the x-axis, energy is going to be on the y. You have your delta H, which is just the amount of energy you start with pretty much. Then you have your EA, which is your activation energy. And you can have multiple depending on how many steps you have in your reaction. Um, so in this case, it's 2NO plus Br2 yields 2NOBr. And then keep in mind here, the activation energy of step 2 is greater than step 1. So what that basically means is that step 2, we can infer from this graph, is going to be the rate determining step because it requires more energy in order to do it. So it's probably gonna be slower because it's gonna take longer to, to gather that information. So um, actually I can leave that there. I will uh, start jumping into the first problem here. So in this graph we have uh, the path of the reaction or reaction time. We have energy A, B, C, and D. So one of the, the standard types of questions that we can be asked here is this. Um, is this overall reaction endothermic or exothermic? So the trick is here, basically we're, we're comparing the, the delta H of this starting, what we started with, the amount of energy we started with here, versus what we ended with. So if the these two kind of drawings, I think, help out quite a bit. If you start low and then you end higher, that is correlating to endothermic. And if you start higher and then you go low, that's going to be exothermic. So in this case, energy is lost. Like you, you're, you have a net amount of energy lost at the end of the reaction, and this one's gained. So it's the same as like energy in versus energy out. In this case, we can look at this graph kind of like draw a dotted line across. There actually is one there from where A starts, the amount of energy that starts, and that line is well above what we have as our final line. So we're gonna start up high and then go low. It's gonna be exothermic. Now another one can be, how many intermediates? are formed. So in this case, we're just going to look at what we have. What we have, we have A here, and then we end with D. Since A is only one reactant, we can assume, uh, based on the fact that you know it's there's a single letter there and there's no digit before it, it's not like 2A, 3A, we can assume it's uh, unimolecular, and in that case, B and C would be intermediates. So B and C, there would be two. Um, so yeah, the answer would be two, I guess, if it's asking how many. Now, um, it might ask you to rate, uh, write the overall reaction um, in the form of reactants yields products. So what that's going to be really is just simply A yields D because we start with A, we get D, and then B and C are the intermediates. Now, uh, if we're asked to write out the steps, and this is like one of those multi-step problems, we can have it be like this. A yields B, B yields C, C yields D. And I actually had a question like this before in, in one of my classes, and the when I wrote it out like A, B, C, D, that was, I think, marked like, yeah, I think I got like half off or something like that because of the fact that it wasn't listed like in, in three separate rows the same way that they do in a lot of these problems. So uh, I'll, I think a lot of people wouldn't have taken off points for that, but I would just make sure you do it in columns if you're ever asked that question and it's, you know, a write-in. So what is going to be the rate determining step? So we can use that the previous example of the graph to solve this question here. 
we can kind of approximate the activation energy we, without even doing any calculations. We can see that clearly step two has the, the greatest amount of activation energy required. Um, and that's the, the activation energy here is um, going to be from this first line from here to here as opposed to this whole thing. Um, because after step one, you, this is your baseline now, and it's from that new baseline to how much energy you need to get through to step three from step two. So the rate determining step is going to be the B to C because it's the, the most amount of the activation energy. So with that problem out of the way, um, there's one other type of problem which I think is a little bit confusing to some people. Um, or rather, it's just something that you might not expect to prepare for and you might kind of throw people off here a little bit. So in this case, you have the natural log of A on that axis on the Y and then we have time here and we have three, what are three different trials. So this is one question that we could have. Which two trials were done at the same temperature with different concentrations? So you can just look at those here and think, so you said it's asking for which two um, had different concentrations at the same temperature. And we can assume that the temperature will affect the rate, um, but if they're done at different concentrations, we know that this up here is the natural log of the concentration. So our answer there is going to be trials one and two. Because even though it's a natural log, this is still, they're still all going to be relative to the amount of concentration that's there. Um, so you know, it's going to increase as it goes up or decrease as it goes down, theoretically. So one and two uh, are the ones that they have the same slope, so they, we can assume they have the same temperature because we know how a temperature affects reaction rate. Now we have um, the next question could be which two trials were done using same Initial, try, initial concentration in different temperatures. So it's very similar to the, the previous problem, but basically it's just asking us to interpret this graph. And I think this one probably is even simpler than the last one, if you're prepared for, for how to interpret the graph. Um, in this case, we're looking, so it's which two trials are using the same initial concentration and different temperatures. So we're looking for uh, different slopes, but the same starting point. So that's going to be two and three. So, oh, yeah, two and three. So that's going to be kind of the three graphs I wanted to show. And these are just, just to kind of get a baseline of, of what to expect from these types of problems. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this helps someone.